William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. This is William Hopefully your favorite videographer. One of the few things that bothered me the most is I could not get the serum, if that's what it is, translated. So all I can say is, whatever it says, whatever he means, whatever it says, please take it with a grain of salt. Because I found some things exaggerated that were said in English. Thank you. Enjoy. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض ثم استوى على العرش الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المسلمين له والحمد لله القاسم الجبارين وبيل الظالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحبه المنتجبين Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for this great opportunity that he has provided for us and we need to make use of first and foremost by reminding each other, myself and brothers and sisters here, that we all need to make sure in this holy month and in all months of the year, we implement divine instructions in our lives. We develop the spirit of taqwa in each and every one of us, inshallah, in ourselves, in our families, in our community, and hopefully in society at large. This is a responsibility that we have. We thank Allah for the opportunity to be here. The opportunity to be here and participate in this great worship of Allah in this blessed month. The first, in the first book, uh, I would like to remind us of something that we need constant reminders, especially in this blessed month, the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anfal says, A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan al-rajim, Innama al-mu'minun, Al-lazina idha dhukir Allah, Wajidat kulubuhum, Wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatih, Zadatkum imanan, Wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. Believers are those, That when God is remembered, And they are reminded of Allah, their hearts tremble in the remembrance of Allah. And when the signs of Allah are presiding upon them, when they see the signs, whether it's in the verses of the Quran, in the heavens and the earth, it causes them to increase in faith, and they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The focus that I would like to have very briefly is on this concept of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At-tawakkul ala Allah. Real believers have tawakkul and they rely on Allah and no one else. They only rely on Allah. How does this happen? How can one rely simply on Allah and no one else? How can one's trust be only in God and no one else. And it's important, brothers and sisters, that we develop this spirit. If we develop the spirit of reliance on God, trust in God, the believers will be of 
unstoppable. One of the reasons why the believers are sometimes not able to move in the direction that they need to is because that this is either lacking or it is not strong enough. There's a lot of reliance on other material sources that we have and this crippled us. Because when we look at the material sources, when we look at the material power, when we look at who's got the money, who's got the finances, who's got the media, who's got this, who's got that, it makes us feel we have no say. It makes us feel we can do nothing. It makes us feel that we are not able to make any difference. But that's because we're looking at things in the wrong way. We need to develop taqwa, tawakkul, and reliance on God, and realizing that we need to rely on Him. How does this happen? It happens through what was mentioned earlier in the verse, zadatun imana. There needs to be an increase in faith. In what arena? When we look at the verses of the Holy Qur'an, one of the areas that we see a lot of emphasis on is that we have got to trust in divine promises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives promises in the Holy Qur'an, many of them. There are many promises mentioned in the Holy Qur'an. The only way I can rely on Allah is that I trust that he's going to fulfill his promise. When he says, In Allah, If you help the cause of God, I will help you. The Almighty will help you. The one whom no one can stand up against will help you. We don't trust that. We don't believe in it. That's why we don't rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to believe in it regardless of the numbers that we have. Another verse of the Holy Quran, If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports a cause and He supports His believers, they will be unstoppable. He has promised that. We don't listen to that promise. We don't believe in that promise. And therefore, we don't take the steps that we need to. What I want to remind us is that in this blessed month, this is the last Friday of And inshallah, we've been able to benefit from it. Inshallah, our faith has increased in this month through fasting that all of you are engaged in today in this heat in Dallas, Texas. We hope that through this fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased all of our faith. We've been able to avoid sin for the increase of the taqwa, the belief in this. Inshallah, we ask the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the blessings, the best of the blessings that He has given to any of these people in this month. In this month, we ask the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to all believers, especially those being oppressed, and especially those being oppressed in the occupied lands today, over the course of these decades, and especially the recent the past, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them mercy, to open the doors of mercy on them, relieve them of the oppression, and give them victory, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the son of Rajeem, 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 the son of
صلي وسلم على ابن عمه ووصيته امير المؤمنين علي بن ابي طالب وعلى ابنته سيده النساء العالمين وعلى صدقي صدقي الرحمه والمعنى الهدى الحسن والحسين وعلى ائمه المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وسعد بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم المنتظر المهدي ارواحنا له السلام Brothers and sisters, I would like to advise myself first and foremost and all of you to make sure that we fulfill our obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That concept of taqwa translates to practice, to fulfilling our obligation and refraining from any sin that we may commit. You and I, brothers and sisters, are here for one of the greatest worships that we have partaken in our lives. And I hope that we do this every year until the final victory of Islam. What are we here for? There are a few points. I don't want to keep people here to eat. There are a few points that I'd like to mention. First, we need to remind ourselves and everyone in the world, in the current setting, in the current setting of the world, that information is controlled throughout the globe. The flow of information is something that there is full control of by those who want to rule the world. And they release information and misinformation as they wish. When the world is in this type of a circumstance, we have a responsibility to remind ourselves and tell whoever we can of the reality of what's going on in the world. As much as we would like to think of this country, our country, and the Western world as being free countries, which you do see some freedom, and there is truth to an extent to that, but when it comes to information, that is not something which is free. The flow of information is not free. There are many signs of this. I don't want to focus on this, but I want to remind us that we have a responsibility because of that. To remind ourselves and not to get confused with the misinformation that's there. We are here to talk about and remind ourselves and to tell the world about something that's been going on not just for 66 years, not just from 1948 when a government was announced, a state was announced as the state of Israel, as they call it, illegitimate state as it is referred to. We are here to talk about and protest and voice our opinion against something that's been going on for much longer than that. A people came from other parts of the world. They took over land. They took life. They terrorized a people. Took everything they had and established a government of their own brought in military equipment and warfare from the most advanced countries of the world and began to use them against a civilian population just because they wanted to have what was rightfully theirs, their land, their lives, their homes, their families. And when they decided, as anyone of you would have, If anyone dares come into your property 
in this country, you have the right to shoot them. But in this part of the world, in Palestine, when the people that were thrown off of their land, not only did they come into their property, they threw them off. And when they try to defend themselves, they are referred to as terrorists. I was watching something very funny the other day on the news, where I saw this the prime minister of the Zionist regime showing samples of the rockets that the resistance, our brothers and sisters from Gaza are throwing towards the Zionists and showing this to Ban Ki-moon in a display of saying that these people are attacking us, we have the right to self-defense. Self-defense for what? For taking over somebody else's land and then you get to defend yourself against them and you have the right to kill them? Look at the weapons that you're using against the women and children in Gaza. Have we thought of what is happening? What has been happening? Over the years, more and more land from the Palestinians have been taken over by the Zionists. They themselves say this in the land that they say belongs to the Palestinians in the West Bank. Palestinians have got to take permission from the Zionists to go from city to another of their own land. And whenever they wish, they will come and create new settlements, destroy their homes. And recently, before this whole incident began, they burned a Palestinian youth alive, these settlers. I don't know if you call them civilization. These are civilized people. The most savage people you could imagine in the world. This is very unfortunate. We are here to say that although the media does not cover it in this way, the media, they have control over. If the reporters try to report the reality of the situation, they are going to be dealt with very severely. Reporters that voice their opinion against the Zionist regime. Government, government, government officials that voice their opinion against the Zionist regime. Networks, news outlets that do that. We are living in a very unfortunate time from that perspective. Over and over, this is reoccurring. And when they defend themselves, which they have the right to, they have the right to defend themselves, not only for the small piece of land that is referred to as Gaza, which they are definitely going to defend, and by the grace of God, they will not lose one bit of that. They have the God-given right to the entire land of theirs, from the sea to the river. This is Palestinian land that they have the right to defend. Now we are living at this time, brothers and sisters. We need to look at this as human beings. How can a human being watch the atrocities? Look at the way the children are killed. Look at the way the homes are attacked. Look at the mutilated bodies of the children and the women there. And say nothing about it. You can't be human if you remain silent in the face of this aggression and atrocity. If you're human, you have to stand up again. But we are also here in the United States of America, brothers and sisters, and all American people. We are American citizens. We are born in America. Some of us, including myself, have pretty strong roots in the United States of America. Don't tell us that we don't belong here. We are in this country 
And we need to recognize that the country we are in, the government that is supposedly representing us, are the greatest supporters of this oppression and this aggression. They are the ones that supply all those bombs that are killing you and I, brothers and sisters, in faith, and all of our brothers and sisters in humanity. It's American bombs that are doing this. It's the tax that you and I are paying. They are sending it instead of using it here in the country to help the American people or to help other people of the world in their prosperity. It's being used to supply bombs to supply and support the Zionist regime to oppress a people. And they have the audacity. The president, our president Obama has the audacity to stand and see all this aggression and say the Zionist regime has a right to defend itself. Shame on you. This is unacceptable on any standard. We as Americans, whether you believe in God or you don't believe, if you're human and your tax money is going in creating the atrocities there in Palestine and elsewhere in the world, we have a responsibility. If this is a democracy, then I can tell you this government does not represent me. I have nothing to do with it. Not only do I have nothing to do with this, I will do everything in my ability to prevent this from continuing. I will give any talk that I need to and speak to any people and demonstrate anywhere to bring this to an end. We have a responsibility as Americans here. And lastly, brothers and sisters, as Muslimin, as believers, as the community of believers, we have a responsibility towards our brothers and sisters that are being oppressed in the month of Ramadan. They don't have water, enough water. I don't know what they do during the times that they're supposed to break their fast. I don't know if they have food to have for iftar or for suhoor. They're not able to sleep well at night. They come and with planes. Have we thought of this, brothers and sisters? Have you looked at Gaza on the map? Fighter jets, bombers, the Navy, the land operation, all of this is attacking that small piece of land. What are they doing to our brothers and sisters over there? We have a responsibility. And I'll tell you one thing. One of the things that the enemies of Islam, those who are causing this, these atrocities and aggression, really want is for us not to be able to get together and come together and join hands for the cause of Islam. They will do everything in their ability to come and say, oh, you are Sunni, they are Shia. They are Sunni, you are Shia. They will pay for satellite TV channels to come and to bash the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet, to bash the wives of the Holy Prophet with clothes that look similar to mine, to say that the Shia do this and to create hatred against the Shia in the larger Muslim population. And then they create channels that come and bash the Shia and use derogatory language towards the Shia to cause the Shia to feel that the Sunnis are against them. And they try to portray that some of the killings that are happening in Iraq, in Pakistan, in Syria is sectarian, or even in Bahrain is sectarian. Brothers and sisters, we cannot play into the plot of the enemy. This is unacceptable. The Holy Prophet Al-Hajjatul Wada announced whoever says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah is a Muslim and they need to be respected 
as a Muslim, and you all are brothers, then you need to join hands. Do not allow the kuffar to make you believe that you're not brothers. It is our responsibility today to come together regardless of the sect we are, as long as we are Muslim. We have got to come together and support our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in the West Bank. We hope that they are successful and God gives them victory, inshallah. We pray, brothers and sisters, the last point that I'd like to say, don't think that you have small numbers here. Don't think of that. Why? When Imam Khomeini, many years ago, said that the last Friday of Ramadan should be the day of Qur, he understood very clearly what he is doing. There needs to be a global people's movement against this filthy Zionist regime that has blood all over its hands. There's got to be a people's movement. Annually, we see more and more cities are joining, more and more people are joining. This will continue, and you can see how the Zionists do not want this. They don't even cover it on the media. It's because they don't want to recognize there is such a movement happening. By the grace of God, as He has promised in the Holy Quran, the victory will belong to the believers, inshallah. We need to come here. May Allah reward all of you. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفار والمنافقين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا قدم الله عليه This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from 2X Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call.